Hello my bookworms, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and in today's video we will be tier ranking all of my recent reads. <laughs> up how are you i hope you're doing well thanks so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit if you remember i did not end up doing an april wrap-up because all of the books that were read in that month were all for secret reading vlogs and it would have been a pointless wrap-up because i wouldn't have told you what i thought about any of them but now the primary video that all of those books were for is out so i'm gonna do a recent reads for april and may we have 15 books to tier rank and chat about but before we get into it i want to thank today's sponsor which is Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a super popular and fast growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to support new and emerging authors while also helping readers find books that they love. And to do this, the team vets hundreds of books every single month to create a curated list of selections of five to seven books for us readers to choose from so that we can spend less time researching and more time reading. My favorite thing about Book of the Month is their skip policy. If for whatever reason you are not vibing with any of the choices that month, you are able to skip that month with no fee, no hassle, and and you can pick up right where you left off the very next month. Plus, Book of the Month is the best place to get the highest quality hardcover book for just $9.99 using my code BOOKWARUM. Out of this month's choices, I definitely would have chosen The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. In this story, we have Luli, who is the Midnight Merchant, a criminal who, with the help of her gin bodyguards, hunts and sells illegal magic. When she saves the life of a cowardly prince, she draws the attention of his powerful father, the Sultan, who blackmails her into finding an ancient lamp that has the power to revive the barren land at the cost of sacrificing all jinn. In a world where story is reality and illusion is truth, Luli will discover that everything, her enemy, her magic, even her own past, is not what it seems. Now she must decide who she will become. Obviously it is very much Aladdin vibes and I am so here for it. There are two thriller picks this month and the first one is The Lies I Tell by Julie Clark as well as Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hiller. The contemporary fiction this month is The Light Lifestyle by Taylor Hahn, and the literary fiction is Woman of Light by Kali Fajardo and Steen. Finally, the historical fiction choice this month is The Wedding Dress Sewing Circle by Jennifer Ryan. Another thing that Book of the Month just started doing is a podcast called Virtual Book Tour. This podcast gives a glimpse into the minds of the writers we love alongside a treasure trove of wisdom, anecdotes, and fun. <laughs> and you can listen to these podcasts on Apple and Spotify. So thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to use my code bookwarum to get your first box for $9.99 and without further ado we can get on into the rest of the video okay so getting back into our video let's start off by screen recording that's a good place to start isn't it i've never done this i don't know what i'm doing hold on <laughs> presentation oh stunning Okay, you can see all of the book covers down in the bottom and we're just gonna rifle through them. We're just gonna go through and chat about it. <laughs> the very first one is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I had a really good time with this book. Um, I chatted about it already in my, if you liked this, then read this video that came out recently. So I won't harp on it too much, but some basic thoughts is that I felt that the writing was absolutely stunning. Even just the prologue, it was literally like two pages, but it hooked me. It made me really excited to keep reading. I I fell in love with the characters. I felt like the plot line was super interesting. The fantasy elements were very unique and definitely made me want to continue the series. Aside from how beautiful the writing was, the characters themselves are predominantly what made me want to rate this so high. One of the main characters, Sarai, I literally cried during the reading vlog because I related to her and what she was going through so much in a sense of like growing up with trauma, dealing with it, coming to terms with it, and kind of realizing that everything you thought about yourself or everything that you have been putting yourself through isn't accurate and isn't the case and just the way that Lainey Taylor wrote Sarai going through and coming to terms with her trauma was just like really it really got me like really good so um yeah I gave Strange the Dreamer five stars it was good soup <laughs> however the next book was When We Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill this one I read as an e-arc and I, I have problems with this book because I really loved the idea of it. I really loved the synopsis and what I was expecting to get was not what I got, it feels like. 
Obviously, I have an entire dedicated reading vlog to this book. So again, I'm not gonna talk it into the ground. But my biggest problem with this book is that it's advertised as Kelly Barnes like adult debut. In my humble opinion, I did not think that this book was adult in the slightest. Our main character was a teenager and like 14, 15 or something like that. In addition to the writing and the storyline, just it felt very YA, which isn't an issue. My only issue is that it's advertised as adult. And so that's what I was expecting. I was expecting more adult themes, but that's not what I got. <laughs> the parts of the book that talked about, you know, women coming together, staying strong, fighting the patriarchy and everything like that. Absolutely, sure, that was great. But ultimately the execution and the way that the dragons were portrayed in the book just weren't, wasn't my favorite. It was kind of cutesy that the dragons could, you know, still participate in everyday life and like send their kids off to school and like still be in society. But I just, I just didn't love it. I just didn't love that. Um, and I ultimately just had found myself more annoyed than anything else. So I gave When We Women Were Dragons a two. The next book is City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare. I am participating in the like Shadowhunters read along with Darian, Casey, and Lisa. I don't know if I'm like officially part of the squad or not, but I wouldn't be mad about it if I was. <laughs> but I am like just following along because I want to get these series out of my head. I just want to read them and be done with them so that I can read Cassandra Clare's later work because I've heard they're really great, but I have to read things by publication. So we're doing this and I read City of Fallen Angels. <laughs> I did not love it. I had <laughs> such a, a boring long time with this book. I listened to it while I was painting my new kitchen. And like I've said to Darian, Lisa and Casey before, this series is really great for having an audiobook while also having to do other things because it doesn't take much effort and energy to pay attention and understand what's going on. So in that sense, it's a five star. Love that it's a low effort book. <laughs> but I was bored. Um, the only thing that saved this story for me was Simon. I really love reading from Simon's point of view, but just Jason Clary, I just, I know that everything's fine and I'm not gonna spoil anything, even though it's an old series, but I just, they make me feel icky. So I just didn't love it. <laughs> I gave it a two. Oh my God, okay. So the next one is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. So my godfather passed away in April. And so I had to drive like three, three and a half hours to the funeral. So I drove for about six and a half hours that day while listening to Anxious People. This was my first book by Frederick Bachman and I feel like it was exactly what I was imagining it would be and it definitely lived up to my expectations. I love that the story was basically just like a character study on so many different types of people, where they come from, what they're going through and how they're interacting with each other under this stressful situation. On top of it being almost kind of like a mystery of like what's actually going on, who was who, and the anecdotes within the story, it was just, it was really great. I remember thinking thinking, man, I'm upset that I don't have the book in front of me so I can't like tab or highlight these passages that are being said because some of them were really great. I remember thinking at some points, wow, this is a five-star read. And then at other points, I was like, oh, this is a little bit boring, <laughs> but I am a hoe for anecdotes and relatable quotes. Wow, that was really great. I'm a hoe for anecdotes and relatable quotes. That's my merch. That's on my t-shirt. <laughs> I'm trademarking it. Um, anyways, <laughs> the fact that the anecdotes were so great, but the story sometimes felt like it was lagging a little bit for me. I, in my heart, what feels right is giving anxious people four and a half stars. Uh, I'm gonna put it in really good, even though it is good soup. It just wasn't steaming hot, you know what I'm saying? So I'm giving it four and a half stars, but I'll put it in the four. The next book is Dress Codes for Small Towns by Courtney Stevens. I've talked about this book a lot on my channel recently. If you've watched my recent videos, this was also in the, if you like this, then read this video. And I loved it. I, I felt like it was amazing. Our main character was absolutely hilarious and her inner dialogue was written so perfectly. I felt like it really captured what it feels like to be an adolescent growing up and trying to figure out your sexuality and what is actually going on within your mind and your body. And this book almost had like a found family situation. Like their friend group is so close knit and it just was phenomenal. Phenomenal. I loved when they were all together and the story itself was just really special. I had a great time with it. It was really funny. I gave it a five. It's a good soup. <laughs> Why am I saying like, it's a good soup? <laughs> it's good soup. <laughs> the next one, I, it's Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers. I honestly, I think that this book is going to live in my mind rent free for, for quite a while. It's immediately five stars. It is fantastic soup. <laughs> 
Cleopatra and Frankenstein is one of the most raw and real contemporary literary fiction, whatever you want to call it, books that I have read in a long time. It's almost on the same level of Seven Days in June, but less sexy. There wasn't much steam in Cleopatra and Frankenstein. And in place of steam, it was just mess. It was chaos. It was unhealthy relationships, whether it be with other people, whether it be with substances or habits, anything. It was a real look at what it means to be an adult while having to deal with the traumas that you went through when you were a kid and carrying that baggage into your adulthood and all of it is like affecting every facet of your life. Our two main characters are Cleo and Frank, Cleopatra and Frankenstein. Cleo's like 25 and Frank is I think in his mid 40s and they end up falling in love, getting married. Everyone says that it's a green card wedding because Cleo is from the UK and was on a visa to study art in New York, but they actually married for love, but they married like six months after they they had met. Each of them are dealing with their own set of messed up things. Cleo predominantly with mental health and Frank predominantly with drinking. And then we have Cleo's best friend who is parsing through his queer identity, trying to figure out what it is exactly that he wants to label himself and present himself as while also dealing with a drug problem. And all of these messy factors play into this story. And it was just the most real story that I've read in a long time. There was 10 pages in the beginning where it was actually hilarious. And there are funny bits throughout the story, but the first 10 pages, I was just laughing out loud. I was like, wow, if this is what the whole book is gonna be like, I'm in for a treat. And it absolutely was not what it was about the whole time because it got really serious. And it did not flinch away from going into the depths of what all of these people are dealing with and the messiness of it all. So it made me really emotional. Obviously it's five stars. I think it was phenomenal. The next book is very Verity by Colleen Hoover. This is my first Colleen Hoover book. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it because I read this book in one sitting because I, I couldn't put it down. I hate how right everyone was in the sense that it really had me by a chokehold. I really had to see what was going on because the way that it was written, <clears throat> hello, <laughs> was it went from our main character, Lowen, who is ghostwriting the rest of Verity's books to Verity's autobiography that Lowen found in Verity's office. And the autobiography was super messed up, super messed up really dark, and if it was real, really horrible. <laughs> But going back and forth to each thing, it was like super creepy, very dramatic, and again, kind of dark and messed up. But that makes for a great story, and I was so into it. <laughs> I will say that I pretty much knew what was happening the whole time, and I guessed the ending. For the most part, there was small parts of the ending that were a pleasant surprise or definitely made me sit and think. And I just want to say that I really, really liked how Verity ended. The way that it wrapped up was actually one of my favorites because it is kind of like an open ending because there are like bows at the end of the story, but it's also like open-ended. So you choose your bow, you choose what you think happened. Uh, and I really liked that. I don't know whether to give it like a four or five. I think that I am going to give it like a four and a half, I guess. I felt like the story was really good, really compulsively readable. I had a good time. <laughs> The next one is Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. This is again, part of that read along that I'm doing. Um, the first book in the Infernal Devices series. I will say that I'm liking this set of characters a lot more than the Mortal Instruments. I'm not as annoyed with any of them as I was with Clary and Jace. And again, I was listening to this while I was finishing my floors over at my new house. And the story itself was good. I felt okay about it. I don't have much to say other than I enjoyed the characters. I still like this world, but I have definitely like already forgotten about most of the story. <laughs> so for that reason, I'm giving it a three in the all right, all right, all right tab because it was fine. It was fine. And then the next book is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pauprado. I've also talked about this book in a recent video, but this is a epic fantasy trilogy in which we follow a few different main characters, but the story is surrounding the ancient Phoenix writers. I felt like the story had a really good storyline and I love jumping from different characters throughout the chapters because due Doing that obviously makes you want to keep reading to see what's going to happen in each character's storyline. And the story itself had some pretty brutal moments. Definitely had to pick up my jaw off the ground a couple times. And the writing was also really great. I'm very surprised that I haven't seen this book around book two more often because I, I had a great time with it. It was exciting. It's queer. And who doesn't love great majestic flying beasts? I loved it a lot. I might rate it like a four and a half, but it feels closer to a five for me. So I'm going to put this one in the five range, but I think it might be like 
a four and a half to a five. The next one is Book of Night by Holly Black. This one I wasn't planning on reading this past month, but I did. <laughs> this was my first book by Holly Black and the synopsis of it is sounds so cool. It's all about dark shadow magic and our main character is a con woman who gets pulled back into that world to try to complete this job that's going around where there's like this book that was stolen and the information in the book is about the shadow magic and how to like harness it to its like fullest extent and things like that. So obviously it's a very hot commodity book. Everyone wants it, but no one can get it except maybe our main character. And I really liked the shadow magic aspect. I felt like it was interesting, but honestly the book didn't do a great job at delving into it. It felt like there was a lot of missed opportunities to actually like deep dive into the shadow magic world and the underground within this world. And it just feels like the book could have been a lot more interesting than what it was. I enjoyed it. It was still a good read, but ultimately I was left wanting a little bit more. So I gave it a three and it goes in the all right, all right, all right tab. The next one is Where Dreams Ascend by Janela Anglais. I also talked about this one before. Where Dreams Ascend, it's about our main character who is a magician and she runs off from the club that she performs at because she's very restricted there. She wants to do more with her magic. So she runs off to this magician's competition in this like weird town in the middle of the woods and it has some like sinister shit going on. The magicians who are in the competition are basically at risk because they keep disappearing one by one. Anyone could be next and our main character is obviously one of the magicians and a lot of weird things are going on within the city. No one wants to talk about it and there's a lot of like what's going on, anyone could die type things and it was good. Again, like the story was fine but it was a long book. It was like 500 pages and it felt like not a whole bunch happened and I was left with a lot of questions. I know it's a duology and the second book will probably answer a lot of those questions, but there was a lot of like fundamental questions that I had that I feel like I shouldn't have had by the end of the book. I don't know if that makes sense, but I was more confused than anything else. The vibes were pretty good. The atmosphere was pretty good. But again, I just felt like some things should have been explained a little bit more and not just introduced and left alone. So I gave it a three as well. All right, all right, all right. The next one was Beyond the Black Door by A.M. Strickland. And this book was really, really interesting. Um, it's about our main character who is a soul walker, which means that she can enter people's souls or NEMs while they're sleeping. And every soul that she has entered into, she sees this black door. And her mom has always told her not to open it, to ignore it, to against all temptations, not to open it. But of course, she puts her ear up to it one night and she hears her name whispered back to her. So ultimately, eventually she does open it. And then it opens this whole creepy, super atmospheric, different soul, which you obviously learn about more in the story. But there's this new character that you get introduced to beyond that black door. And there's that side of the story within like the dream world. And then in the waking world, there's a lot of interesting like politics and secret societies that are clashing with each other within this fantasy world. It was really interesting. I had a really good time reading it. Again, the atmosphere was phenomenal. A.M. Strickland's writing is really, really nice. And I ultimately had a really good time. I almost was expecting it to be a series by the way that it was reading because it felt like there could have been a lot more explored in the future. But to my knowledge, it is a standalone and I felt like it was a four. The next one is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, if you have heard me talk about it already, it's a five. It's, it is great soup. Um, I love Skyward so much. I felt like it was absolutely hilarious. It is a YA sci-fi by Brandy Sandy and our main character, Spensa, wants to grow up and become a pilot following in her father's footsteps. But her father was shot down for deserting in one of the like historic battles. And so she has been labeled a coward's daughter, which is making everything very difficult for her, but she is determined nonetheless. Spensa is a phenomenal main character. She's very hard headed, very like aggressive in her passions. And I just love her a lot. The story is absolutely hilarious as well. We get new characters like Mbot, Doomslug, who are my favorites for sure. The battle scenes are super descriptive, very long, very exciting. And the stakes are obviously very high. So there's a lot going on at like all times. But there are also plenty parts of the story that made me like very, very angry because Spencer was so mistreated, but she is so determined to overcome and it's just awesome. It was a great story. I gave it a five. Uh, Goldenrod is the next one by Maggie Smith. I'm not rating this one because it's a 
poetry collection. I don't really, unless it's a collection that like really made a mark on me, I feel like I don't really like to rate poetry because I, that's not really the point of poetry. Um, I felt like it was a nice collection. There were some that I really, really liked, others that I didn't really feel anything for. Those ones were more like about the political climate at the time that this collection was written. And then the ones that I really liked were just simple ones where Maggie would be writing about like an acorn or a rock or something that she found in her son's pants when she was doing laundry and just little things like that. Like there were some really good ones, but then there were some that just like didn't really care too much about. So it was fine, but I'm not rating it. The last one is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This one, I'm, I was gonna rate it, but I'm not rating it because it's part of a secret reading vlog. So hi, sorry, but I did read The Kiss Quotient in April, uh, but I'm not gonna talk about it because you'll see it, you'll see it soon, ish, soon ish. <laughs> um, but that's it. I mean, I think that I'm pretty confident with these ratings. I could see anxious people being in the five or the four, um, as well as Verity, honestly. Like I like, again, I liked both of those enough to be in the four or five, but I'm gonna leave this where it's at and then you can move them to where you see fit, I suppose. That's it, very fun. Um, I like tier ranking. I think that this is a really nice visual. I think I might do this more often, but that's all I have for you today. So thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to use my code bookwarum through the link down in my description to get your first box for $9.99. And if you are still watching, then leave the shoe. Is there a, like a boot emoji down below in the comments? While you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye.